Hey guys, it's Coach Allen here, and Coach Christian and I are gonna show you three exercises you can do, actually a progression, to improve your ability to jump off of two feet. Now, if jumping off two feet is what's most natural for you and is your preference, you are probably either a strength or a spring type. And we wanna give you some more tools for your toolbox on how you can continue to develop your vertical explosion off of two feet. All right, Christian. Yes, sir. So this first one here, we're going to put ourselves in a position of almost disadvantage compared to almost all the other ways that we would usually jump, right? With our chest a little bit more up, a little bit more of a squatty kind of quad focused type of jump. On this one, I'm going to load my hamstrings and I'm going to load my glutes. Now, I will never jump and do this drill. It will not be successful if I don't feel that tension to begin with, right? So my butt is pressing back, my hands are pressing back, and again, a lot of tension through my lower body. Whenever I feel ready, I'm gonna go ahead and drive through my ankles and then utilize my backside, right? My glutes and my hips popping forward to get me as high as I can. Again, loading the backside, lots of tension, and up, landing. Again, always sticking the landing with two feet just to always ensure that we're taking our landing mechanics as well as our jumping, right? So we're trying to engage the posterior side of the body, turn everything on for this. Yes, yes. Sets and reps. So we're thinking only five reps right here, and we'll go about three sets. We don't need a lot, it's just the quality, right? If we focus that, if we realize that we're doing each rep and it's not getting better every single time in yep. terms of feeling more tension throughout our body, then take a break and come back to it at a different time. Perfect, and the next move. Yep, so again, another position of disadvantage Instead of being here into more of a hinge where my hamstrings and my glutes are turning on more, I'm gonna put myself down, right, into more of a squat. Now, for a lot of us, we might get into this position and this would be the bottom position that we jump out of, right? But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place more force, right, more restriction in our body by going a little bit lower than our usual jumping base position. So now from here, knees are wide, hands back, huh? Land. And again, I get it. We're not gonna be feeling as springy during this jump, but we are training, right? That's part of, part of training. We're, tra we're trying to show our body, right? A little bit more load, a little bit more challenge that we can adapt and become stronger for it. So again, this is my normal. I'm gonna drop down here a little bit lower. Hands are back, pop up, and then land from that position. Again, I'm thinking five reps, three rounds. Beautiful, and number three. Number three here. So now I'm gonna go ahead utilize a little bit of resistance. So I okay. have a dumbbell, kettlebell, med ball, something about five, 10, 15 pounds is perfectly fine, right? Okay. And so again, now I'm gonna st mm -hmm. still dig in my squatty type of hop. But now I got a little weight here. And now I'm actually gonna utilize a little stretch reflex, okay. right? So I'm gonna load myself and jump as quick as I possibly can with a little bit of weight now. Love it. I'm here, toes are facing out, hips back and down, pop. Land. Again, always bracing the landing. The landing is very, very important. It's back. Landing. I'm thinking five reps right here for a total of three rounds. Beautiful. So if you combine those three different movements, uh, they will help you improve your ability to jump high vertically off of two feet. Hey guys, it's Coach Allen here and I'm with Coach Christian and we're gonna share three exercises that you can do almost anywhere to improve your ability to jump off of one foot. Now, if jumping off one foot uh, is your preference, then you are probably a spring or a speed type jumper. So Christian's gonna show you three exercises now to improve your ability to be explosive one leg at a time. All right. So the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use just one leg and I'm gonna make sure that my quad, hamstring, calf, glute, everything is co-contracted at the same time. And we're gonna try to keep that there the whole time, right? So as I'm there, the only thing then moving is my ankle. Okay. Right? And I'm thinking every time my foot comes off the ground, I'm thinking toe up off the ground. I'll get 10 contacts on one leg, and then I'll go to 10 contacts on the next leg for a total of three rounds. So it's not that many reps, but again, the quality is a little bit more important at first, and then we can kind of continue to build the conditioning and the capacity aspect. Love it. So we're building a, a elasticity and springiness in the ankle joint. Into the ankle joint, Beautiful. 100%. All right, what's yep. the second one? Now the second one, we're gonna go into a split stance. So one foot forward, one foot back behind us. And what I'll do is I'll drop down, utilize that stretch, and come up and switch my feet, right? So I'm down, up, switch. Perfect. Make sure I land, I'll come back up to reset. Down, up, switch. Right, and again, very, very important that I'm landing and hitting that landing very stable yep. every single time. I'll go five times with one foot forward, five times with the next foot forward, so a total of 10 jumps there 
for three rounds. Beautiful. And bring us yeah. home. What's the third one? The third and final one here, I'm going to go with it's called a dragon squat. Okay. Right? So a dragon squat is one foot forward and the other leg is going to come back behind me. So as I drop down, I'm coming down the load and then going onto the ball of that front foot. Again, drop back behind, drive up to a load. One foot back behind, ball of the foot and bringing that knee up high. I'll go four times on one side and then I'll go ahead and get four times on the next side. And again, always coming up to the ball of the foot after bringing my foot back behind. Uh, once the player's uh, shown that they're proficient and have mastery over these, what are some ways yeah. that we can progress? Would you ever recommend adding external resistance? And would yeah. you prefer they hold something, wear a vest? What would be the best way to add resistance to this? Totally. So a weight bench would be awesome. Okay. Starting with a little bit. So it's very, very small, maybe five pounds, then 10 pounds, then 15, and slowly, right? Progressively overloading your body. Yep. Rather than kind of just throwing yourself into the fire. Because a lot of these things are very elastic, right? Elastic work yep. needs a lot of uh, uh, quick changes between stretch yes. and contract, stretch and contract. So if we're too heavy, we have too much resistance on us, yeah. we're not gonna be able to make that transition quick enough. So therefore the drill kind of loses its speed and like elastic uh, capabilities. Love it. So there you go guys, there's three different exercises you can do almost anywhere to improve your springiness, your elasticity, but most importantly, your vertical explosive power one leg at a time. Hey guys, Coach Allen here. Coach Christian and I are gonna show you three exercises for improving your first step. First step is something that every single basketball player in the world covets uh, because a first step will help you not only offensively, but will help you defensively as well. And it's one of the major pillars of athleticism. So Christian's gonna show us three exercises to improve first step. Awesome. One of the skills of athleticism is being able to build tension, right? So a lot of tension has to be in our torso and our lower body so that when we produce force from our body into the ground, things are not inefficient, right? Joints are able to communicate, tissues and muscles are able to communicate with each other very efficiently. So I'm pushing my butt back, making sure that my hamstrings and my glutes are on. So I'm not loose right now, I am very tight. Here with this weight, easily could be a book, could be a med ball, could be a band, could be a backpack, could be your dog or a cat, right here at my chest, okay? As I'm about to step here, I got a lot of load in my right leg. Big press right outside that bent knee. I'm gonna try to hold that for as long as I can and then bring it right on back. I'll go five times on each side for a total of three rounds. And again, I'm staying loaded. As I step, I'm not extending my leg and then bending it. I wanna keep this same bend here in my knee, in my hip, and then press right on outside, stabilizing that foot there. Five reps each side three rounds, and again, this is great for an activation drill to do before every single practice, game, whatever it may be. Absolutely, all right, what's the second one? I love that. Now, second one, we're gonna put this way over here to the side for right now. Now what we're gonna work on, right, is getting into this split stance. So you guys can see a long line from the crown of my head back to my heel. Now, as I make this switch, if I am loose in my upper body, it's gonna look like that. My chest is gonna kind of deviate and it's gonna move here a little bit. So I'm gonna keep this one long line and switch. Switch, switch. Of course, you can see, not gonna be perfect every single time, but no. this is how we know this is the training position that we need to be in and we gotta test. Making sure that our torso and our lower body has tension there the whole time. So I'm thinking three reps on each side, so a total of six switches for three rounds. And again, great before practices, great before games, and great just during, but right before your training sessions, maybe right before you go into like some heavy lifting. Love it, and yeah. the third one. Third one here, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and get into an overhead press as we make some explosion, right? Some tension there into the ground. So again, if you don't have a plate at home, a med ball would be perfectly fine, a foot. Anything that's light resistance. This right here is just five pounds, so you don't need a lot, okay? Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to find that true triple extension from the ankle, from the knee and from the hip, okay? I got a bent knee and I have a locked out leg here. Now as I press, I'm gonna switch and you'll see as I make contact here with this right foot, I'm gonna go onto the ball of my foot and try to hold for as long as I can. Again, I'll show you again on that right foot, locked out leg, my knee stays bent. As I pull my foot down, I got a big tall press to the top. I'm not thinking here, tippy toes, right? Because then that's gonna kind of over aggravate the calf. I'm thinking ball of the foot, right where the padding is, right underneath your toes. That's the contact point that I'm thinking every single time that I make that contact. I'll say about three reps on yep. each side, right? Taking enough time in between each rep 
to make sure you are fully rested. Go to about two to three rounds. And again, great activation drill right before games, right before practices, or really just during your lifts as well. Love it. Now as basketball players, you know the importance of the triple threat position. What Coach Christian is talking about now is triple extension. Can you talk a little bit more about what triple extension is and why it's so important for first step explosiveness? Yeah. So the principle of triple extension is just making sure that the ankle, the knee, and the hip are actually able to communicate and what some would call fold upon each other. If certain joints, for example, my ankle is stiff and tight and doesn't understand how to produce force through a optimal range of motion, then the knee and the hip are going to have to compensate. When we start finding compensations, that's when we start finding injuries and setbacks. And usually, we want to stay away from those. Absolutely. Well, there you have it. There's three exercises you can do almost anywhere to improve your first step explosiveness. Hey guys, it's Coach Allen and I'm here with Coach Christian. And we're going to give you five exercises you can do anywhere, even in a small amount of space, to improve your defensive speed and explosiveness. Uh, if you want more playing time, and I don't think I've ever met a player that doesn't want more playing time, the surest way to get that done is to become the best defender on your team. Uh, part of being a defender is just having that relentless tenacity of wanting to stop your opponent. Part of it is having a, a high basketball IQ so you know what your opponent's gonna do in advance and you can anticipate. But a good portion of it comes down to your athleticism and being able to improve your speed. So Coach Christian is gonna show you right now five exercises to improve your defensive speed. Yes, sir. So one of the biggest limiting factors for us sometimes is being able to be in a good, ready position. What I mean by good is in a low enough position, right? If our center of mass is tall and we try to change direction or produce force, we are not going to be efficient. That's where injuries start to happen and that's where you start to get beat off the dribble, right? So to help increase our range of motion here, I'm gonna go ahead and start by putting my ankle out in front so that my knee and my ankle are in a straight line and that my knee and my hip are in a straight line here. I'll do the same thing for my back leg. I'm gonna put my knee and my hip in a straight line, and then my knee and my ankle. So I got two 90 degree angles working right here. Now as I'm here, I can use my hands, I can use a med ball, I can use anything I need to to help press into the ground if we're a little tight here. I'm gonna go chest first towards my back knee, and then I'm gonna go hand on my front knee, and just think wide knees, wide knees. You see I sneak my opposite hand in and slowly let my opposite leg drop down into the ground. I'll use my hands to reset my base position. And then again, upper body first, lower body second, and then I'll just let my hands facilitate how well and how slow my knees move. I'm thinking here about five times, five reps over each hit. So a total of 10 rotations and 10 switches. Every single time that we switch, let's hold for a couple seconds. Let's make sure we feel comfortable here. Maybe a deep breath and then chest, then lower body, and then slowly rotating over to the next side. Now, that was one purely for range of motion, yep. not that much tension in it. But now that we're gaining range of motion, we gotta start building some capacity. Right? We gotta start building a little bit more tension and strength in this position. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna frame my front knee. So I'm gonna go belly button, face up with my front knee. My hands are framing my front leg. I'm gonna think belly button all the way diving out in front of my knee. Big dive, big dive. I'm most likely gonna feel that stretch on the outside of my front hip. When I get here, I'm gonna push my knee into the ground. I'm gonna push my shin into the ground. Hold there for five seconds, and then I'll press back up. I'll do five reps just like this. Again, belly button, folding all the way out in front of my knee. When I feel like I get that big stretch, perfect. Hold it there, now push your knee down. Now push your shin down. Push this front hip down. And then again, I'll press myself back on up. I'll do five reps on one side, and then I would fold over and do the same thing on my next side. Again, belly towards the front knee, hold at the bottom, pressing into the ground here for five seconds before I press myself back on up. Beautiful. Yep. So that's the first one, and that's working mostly on range of motion and hip mobility. What's yep. our second exercise? Yep. Second one now is going to be here with the plate. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing some more lateral uh, redirection stuff here. Okay. Right? So the first one I'm gonna do is just really focusing on my planting, right? Because of course, uh, change of direction is a big deal in defense, right? Yep. So if we're not able to plant appropriately, then chances are this dynamic movement of back and forth isn't gonna work out too well. So we're gonna pause ourselves right here, right? I get a couple slides and then I press. 
And again, I wanna make sure you saw on that one, it was a little shaky. But what I wanna make sure that as I'm sliding and as I press, my weight, my center of mass is right inside this bent knee. That I'm not allowing my torso and things to step outside of my bent knee. So I'm gonna get five reps on each side with the violent punch outside of that, of that base knee. I'll do five times on each side. And again, short distance, right? We don't need that much space. Right. That one, I think I got two or three shuffle slides in between. That's more than enough. And if you don't have a plate, we could use a book, you could use a med 100%. ball, anything. Anything with a little bit of resistance. Yeah, perfect. this is only like five pounds right here, so that's perfect. Be perfect. And right now we're in a beautiful weight room with turf, but this could mm -hmm. be done on the court. This could be done just 100%. about anywhere where there's a flat, safe surface. Exactly. Love exactly. it. What's number three? Now, number three, now we're gonna turn this into a little bit more of a capacity drill. Okay. So we know that we're able to plant and absorb force the way we want to, right? Our yep. center of mass is lined up appropriately. Now we're gonna make this a little bit more dynamic. Uh, I'll go about, again, three to five reps on each side. Yep. Any time I start to realize that my center of mass gets weird or that I'm reaching my leg out and not sinking right into that bent knee, that's when I know I need to take a rest. Yep. I need to think about where my body was, become aware of how my body was moving, and then make those adjustments as needed. Love it. Next exercise. Yep, next exercise. So, now, shuffle slides, side to side. A big part of that, right, has to do with the ability to produce force laterally. Yes. So what we're gonna work on is a single leg bound towards the lateral side of the wall. So as I'm here, I wanna think about loading right, right into this hip. So I'm thinking throw my hip to the back corner. Hip to back corner, land. And again, we've already talked about landing. Yes. Right, if we don't land well, we're not gonna produce well. So don't just get into this jump and stick it tall, I want to still load as if I'm trying to change direction. So I can start tall, load, pop, land. What's a couple of coaching cues on the landing? On the landing, if our heel is coming up off the ground when we land, yep. chances are our head is probably too much forward. So maybe eyes up so that the chest can come a little bit taller there, right? And then another thing is as I'm hopping, I want to get my work done early. So this leg here, if I know I'm going to land in a bent knee position, I don't want to reach mm. and then bend into it, right? That's taking more time. Yeah. So I want to start to bend this knee as I take off so that right when I land, my hands are back and that's the only thing that needs to move after that. Gotcha. There's no earthquake, there's no movement once I make contact with the ground. Love it. And our fifth and final exercise. Fifth and final exercise, we're going to work on our sumo squats, right? So if I have a weight, awesome. Book, med ball, something, awesome. I'll hold it right here out in front of me. Okay? If not though, I'll show you this just body weight. My toes are purposely facing out to the side. My heels are a little bit wider than hip width apart. I want to think wide knees, wide hips as I drop down, hold for a couple seconds, and then come up tall. What's usually going to want to happen as I drop, my hips, ankles are gonna get tight, so my butt's gonna start to push back. I wanna force my butt and my hips to stay right underneath my shoulders. I'll get down there to the bottom, hold for a couple seconds, and then come up tall. So now we're kind of just working on the strength aspect. Now we're working on how well do all of my quad, glute, hamstring, adductor muscles able to turn on in a low position. Again, I'm thinking 10 reps right here. I'm thinking three rounds. Great to do right before you go out onto the court or also just as a uh, auxiliary movement during your lower body lifts. Love it. So there's five exercises and drills you can do with very limited space. You can do them just about anywhere to improve your defensive speed. And I've also found through experience one of the best things to become a better defender and improve defensive speed is to play one-on-one -on -one against someone that is a better player than you are, or more importantly, someone that is faster and quicker than you are. And that way you'll be able to take everything that Coach Christian just showed you and you'll be able to apply that to very game-specific reps. So hope you guys enjoy and hope you become the best defenders possible. My playing level just skyrocketed. Anyone that's serious about playing basketball needs to get EGT. I would describe it as the best training program in the world. This lead guard training program, like, it creates a monster in you. You got experience it. It's just on another level. The best decision in my life was to buy the first EGT program.